Hi there, and uh, as always, I'm so grateful that you could join me. And I want to begin by sharing a quote from the late Ravi Zacharias. It's quite a thought-provoking uh, quote. He said this, The foundation on which you build your life is the only thing that will stand when the storms of life ultimately come. And they will come. It's not a question of if, but when. The foundation on which you build your life is the only thing that will stand when the storms of life ultimately come. And I want to tell you now a uh, rather cautionary tale, something that happened to me fairly recently. And perhaps I ought to say that if you're a bit of a health and safety uh, buff, then uh, perhaps uh, you ought to uh, turn off at this point. A couple of months ago, Sue and I uh, managed finally, after a long delay, to buy a home where we will be moving, to where we'll be moving when I retire in a couple of months' time. Uh, unfortunately, because of the uh, lockdown, etc., we haven't, hadn't until very recently been able to visit. But uh, we thought uh, that it was a uh, time when it would be okay, not least because we need to check on the property and one or two things that we need to do before we eventually move. One of the things that we needed to do to the new property was uh, in one of the rooms, the room that will become the study or office, we needed to repaint it because the walls were quite dark purple. Not, not a, uh, a bad colour in some ways, but it made the room very dark. So three of the walls were painted uh, this purple colour. The other wall had uh, stripy purple wallpaper. Now, if it was up to me, I would have said, just let's just paint all four walls. But no, Sue said, no, um, we ought to strip the uh, wall that is papered. It'll just make a better job of, of things. And uh, so I uh, agreed that we would do that. So th the plan was that I would uh, paint work on painting the three walls and Sue would work on removing the wallpaper. Now, unfortunately, our uh, wallpaper remover, the steamer, is with our daughter in South Wales. But Sue has a, a kind of portable iron. It's uh, it's not like a traditional iron with a flat uh, side that steams, steam comes out of. It's one more with a uh, the steam comes out of the end and you roll it down your shirts or whatever. So Sue said, well, we can use that to try and get rid of the wall, get the wallpaper off the wall. So that's what we did. She, she was working on the wallpaper. I was working on the painting. And uh, it went along swimmingly. Uh, Sue uh, not only used the steamer to get, try and get the wallpaper off. And once the wallpaper had come off, we realised there was an, uh, a backing paper, a, uh, an under, underlying coat of uh, paper. I can't remember what you call it now. But anyway, there's more paper underneath. So she had to work and get enough of that off as well. Lining paper, that's what it's called. So by the time uh, most of the painting was done, uh, there was a little bit at the top of the wall of lining paper that needed to be removed. So Sue said, I can't reach that very well. Can, can you do it? So even though I didn't really see all that point in taking it off, I, I realised it was the right thing to do. So even though I was quite tired, I thought, I'll give it a go, get rid of this last bit of uh, lining paper off the wall. So by this time, Sue had been using uh, hot soapy water to try and get the remainder of the paper off. And uh, quite a lot of that is on the floor. So it was, there's was a bit of a flood on the floor. So anyway, uh, I uh, said, I'll, I'll get this last bit of paper off. So there was I on this step ladder. In one hand, I had uh, a bucket with some hot soapy water in on the other and I had uh, the scraper and I was leaning up to the uh, uh, top of the wall to get the remaining paper off. And obviously I was a bit tired. I wasn't as careful as I should have been. And uh, leaning over to get this, uh, remove this paper. And I suddenly felt underneath me that the, the step ladder was slipping on the water that was on the uh, floor. And uh, I couldn't do anything to stop myself. And suddenly... I was falling and I landed on my back, not only on the floor, but on this uh, steamer, this steam iron thing that Sue's been using uh, 
uh, and landed with the front of my back right on there and it was quite painful. Actually, uh, I feel that I was tremendously fortunate and I thank God that I didn't do more damage. It's a little bit sore on my back still, but uh, I live to tell the tale. And the funny thing was that uh, a little bit later, Sue came uh, to where I was and she was obviously a little bit upset and she had steamer uh, iron in her, in her hand and she said, look, you've broken this. <laughs> uh, so uh, through the fall, I'd managed to smash uh, or break it, smash it, the, the plastic. But there you go. Uh, it was uh, a silly thing to do. I should have been more careful, but perhaps I was a little bit tired. And the point of that story is that the foundation on which I stood was insecure. Jesus told the story of two house builders, one who built his house on the sand and one who built his house on the rock. I remember many years ago speaking to some children and telling them the story of the two house builders. And I asked a question to the children. I said, what do you need before you start building a house? And the answer I expected was uh, the foundations to be laid. But one little boy put his hand up and said, uh, you need planning permission. And of course, that wasn't the expected answer, but I guess that he was uh, right, wasn't he? But Jesus told about the story about the two house builders, one who built on the rock, on a firm foundation, and one who built on the sand. And then he said, when the storms came and the wind began to blow and the sea rose, that the house that was built on the sand, uh, the, the foundations were no, not strong and the house fell. Whereas the house that was built on the firm foundation stood through the storm. And Jesus finishes that story by saying this. Everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like the wise man who built his house on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. So it's not enough, says Jesus, just to listen to his word. We need to put it into practice. It's not enough to say, I am a Christian, I am a disciple of Jesus, unless we live it out in our lives. And we live in a time, don't we, right now, where there is a storm blowing, a, a coronavirus storm. It's affecting the whole world. And many aspects of our society on which we, we rely are becoming uncertain, unsure. And so many are anxious and wonder what can we rely on any longer? The only firm foundation for life is Jesus Christ. And I'm reminded of that old song that says, on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is shaking sand. And I thank God that that my foundation is on Jesus Christ. And I hope and pray that you too find that firm foundation in Jesus, the only foundation that can never be shaken. God bless you and God bless your day.